Hi everyone. So uh, thank you for uh, coming to this online lecture series on uh, machine learning. My name is Rishabh Ayer and I'm an assistant professor at University of Texas at Dallas. Uh, I actually joined the faculty at UT Dallas this year. Uh, before this, I was a senior research scientist at Microsoft. Uh, I was actually a machine learning scientist. So I was, I, I kind of worked on the applied side of machine learning, uh, doing machine learning research, but also kind of looking at products, building products based on machine learning. Uh, and now I've joined academia back. So before uh, Microsoft, actually, I did my PhD at University of Washington. So I've seen both the academic side, the research side, as well as the industry side. Um, so this is the first lecture in this series, and I will basically give a kind of high level overview of machine learning. Hopefully I'll try to make it a little bit, little bit um, more kind of interactive and uh, with kind of some figures and things like that. So it becomes more clear as to what is machine learning, uh, what are the applications of machine learning, the different types of machine learning and things like that. Okay, so uh, I'd like to actually acknowledge uh, professors Nick Rousey and um, Sriram Natarajan from UT Dallas. So I have actually used their slides and their templates in actually making this. All right, so very quickly, I'll just go over some prerequisites uh, in, in, in this course. So, so this is a basic machine learning course. I won't be uh, requiring that you 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 have basic no uh, I won't be requiring that you have knowledge of machine learning right but you should have uh, basic knowledge of data structures and algorithms and some basic knowledge on probability and statistics so in particular uh, some knowledge on basic probability linear algebra right so eigenvalues eigenvectors matrices vectors vector operations I'll actually cover some of this in some of the introductory classes but I but 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 I'll assume that you kind of have have taken at least one class on this and uh, multivariate calculus right so in some sense the way I see it uh, you have basically the kind of structure of machine learning right so this is the structure of machine learning and then you have basically the pillars over here so like these are actually the three pillars uh, of machine learning so you have probability linear algebra and um, multivariate calculus right so these are like the three pillars of machine learning okay so what is machine learning right so again this is a very very high level view of machine learning but i just wanted to kind of contrast machine learning with the standard software engineering or programming right so basically you have software um sorry so you have software engineering and uh, essentially the idea is that you a, a software engineer right creates a program so he creates a program uh, basically aligned with a given input and an output right so once the program is created then you basically give it an input and then you get an output for it right the output is the kind of desired output from the program the paradigm of machine learning on the other hand is that you actually provide several input output pairs right so this is not just one input output but actually several of these input output pairs and then there is actually a machine learning algorithm that actually automatically learns this program right so once this program is learned then you will actually have an ai created program right so in some sense this sounds very vague and it sounds too good to be true but actually we'll see that that kind of fundamentally right fundamentally there's a lot of math and you know statistics and probability and you know kind of linear algebra that goes inside and basically based on this math you can actually come up with a data driven paradigm to actually build these kind of machine learning models so we'll actually see uh, we'll, we'll actually study various paradigms of machine learning models in this in the next several lectures so again getting a little bit deeper into the machine learning paradigm right so you have an input and this is the model or the program and then you have the output. So in a machine learning um, vocabulary, right, uh, the input is also called features, right? So we'll represent the input as features, and we'll actually we'll actually see what features mean. And the output is are called labels, right? And uh, the every or I, or I would say most machine learning algorithms, right? Most machine learning algorithms have this component of having a training algorithm, right? So the training algorithm takes several 
pairs of inputs and outputs right so these are again several pairs of inputs and outputs and then you get as uh, an, an output of this a kind of program or a model right so exactly what this training algorithm is and what this model is we will actually see uh, this in the next few lectures all right so i'll start with some basics right and i'll start with the basics of actually vectors so we, de we denote x as a vector and we will say that x belongs to r raised to d and i will say that this is actually a d-dimensional vector so what does it mean it basically means that x is a, a vector over here and this is d dimensions so uh, again give some examples uh, let's say x belongs to r square so it's a two-dimensional vector then in that case an example of this would be say the vector one two right and in fact in two dimensions i can actually express this i will i can call this x1 x2 so in general this d dimensional vector i can represent as x1 x2 up to xd right so i'll represent this as a d dimensional vector and i can represent this as x1 i can represent this as x2 right so any point over here this is the vector x this is a vector y this is a vector z right so there are some basic operations on vectors right so the first is vector addition so vector addition is a vector z is equal to x plus y if z i equal to x i plus y i for all i from 1 to d right so this this is a little bit of a notation here but what it means is that the vector z if it's x plus y means every component gets added right so again i'll take an example over here so if x is 1 2 y is 3 4 then the sum vector is basically 1 plus 3 and 2 plus 4 6 right so z is 6 so similar to this you can actually define vector subtraction and you can say z equal to x minus y right and this is very similar to addition um, then finally you have a dot product right so what is a dot product so a dot product is i will say that uh, z is actually x dot y and this is actually a scalar now so z is a scalar if and and the way you can write this is that this is a sum from i from 1 to d of xi yi right so i take the component wise multiplication so again coming back to this example right with this with this example above right then z is actually equal to 1 dot 3 plus 2 dot 4 right which is 3 plus 8 which is 11 so dot product between x and y is actually 11 in this example right so this is basic operations on 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 vectors um so now um the, I'll, I'll i'll basically kind of introduce what feature vectors are right so we we, we call this feature vectors because if you recall right uh there was an input right and we were saying that the input is actually a feature you can say a feature vector right and this input goes into a model and then you get an output right so we're calling the input as a feature vector so what does it mean by being a feature vector so let's say the input is an image right and the task is to actually classify if there is a person in the image or not right so the 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 model the the example of the task right the model over here is there a person or not right so in some sense uh, so that means that the output here is uh, person no person right and um, the the feature vector basically corresponds to the pixels in this image so there are all of these different pixels right so if this is a n cross n image right then the feature vector would basically be n cross n cross the number of channels so typically there are three channels for rgb 
so something like this right so this would be a feature vector right so we will we'll give one more example so say this is a text right so say i have a document over here and then i have various sentences i have various sentences and sentences comprise of words right another way of representing a feature vector now is that i take all the words right and then i represent the feature vector of this as a gigantic vector comprising of words so say there is a word is there is a word hello what name right and there are a bunch of words so essentially the feature vector one simple representation and by the way this is actually called bag of words representation we'll actually look at this sorry this is called bag of words representation right so we'll actually look at this in um, in the next few uh, few lectures ahead when we actually uh, look at a few models, right? So this bag of words representation, for example, will give a count or, or or some kind of normalized count of the number of times these words appear, right? So number of times is appear. So maybe is appears four times. Hello appears three times, right? What appears fifteen times? name appears one time right and so on so this would be a count um, would be one way of actually representing this feature vector right so the feature vector now is that i have every every unique word in my text document right and then uh, i convert this into a feature vector well why would we want to classify text documents it could be a bunch of reasons right so this text could be for example an email Right, and we'll actually look at this uh, in the next few slides as kind of motivating example. And then you want to predict if this is spam or not spam, right? Or this could be, for example, a web page, right? And you want to predict the category of this web page. So, for example, is it sports or is it news, right? Or you have a bunch of categories. So, you just want to categorize the, the web page into a bunch of categories, right? So, this is the basic idea of feature vectors. Feature vectors is you take an input, you're representing the input in some kind of a mathematical vector, right? And the, the whole kind of thing about machine learning is basically how do you represent this as features, right? So, representing as features is actually a very important problem in machine learning. All right. So, so I think we basically saw vector operations already. So, I'll just write down over here. So, you have addition, you have um, multiplication is basically dot product, right? And the third is um, you have subtraction, right? So we, so we have these, so in some sense, these are the most important um, kinds of vector, op uh, vector operations. Of course, you could also have something called a scalar multiplication, which we didn't look at but this is this is basically saying that i have a vector x right and then um, i basically say that a vector y is c times x right so if my vector is say c times x1 up to xd right then this would basically be c x1 until cxt so this would also be a d-dimensional vector where every uh, for every coordinate i multiply it by a c right so this is again simple vector operations and then now matrices and uh, matrix vector product right so uh, this is this is something that is also kind of very critical so we, we represent a matrix as a m cross n matrix right so the way we have a vector as a kind of d-dimensional vector we can represent a matrix as a m cross n matrix so what it means by m cross n is that the number of rows are m and the number of columns are n right so that's a m cross n matrix so for this vector product to be defined we need x over here to be actually a vector in n cross 1 Right? So there need, needs to be n rows and only one column. So it's a column vector, uh, which is n cross 1. And this uh, vector that we get over here, right? Sorry. So this, this one is itself a m, is a m rows and it's one column only, right? So now how do we represent this? Well, I just take basically a dot product between 
the first row and this column right so i take a dot product here so it's a11x1 plus a12x2 up to a1nxn right so this is the first entry here the second entry is again i take a dot product between this and this and i get this value right and finally the mth guy i take the dot product between this vector and this vector and i get the mth value so since there are m rows over here the final output will, will be m rows um again this is this is an example i i won't really go over it maybe i'll just go over it very quickly right so this is the matrix a this is the vector x i take a dot product between this and this right so i get 2 1 multiplied by i mean 2 multiplied by 1 minus 1 multiplied by 1 and so on right so i get this entry similarly i can take this and this and i get this entry right so the vector is minus is 1 and minus 3 okay um, so finally, uh, you can also do matrix matrix products, right? Actually, this was a good illustration I found for matrix matrix products. So the matrix matrix product here is this is a matrix C and this is A multiplied by B, right? So A over here is actually N cross P, right? And B is P cross Q. So for a matrix matrix product to be defined, we need this entry and this entry to be the same, right? So then this can be actually written as a n cross q matrix, right? And this will be vector, the, the vector C, right? So C is actually A cross B, right? So that's how you can write a matrix matrix product. And you, you say A cross B is basically a n times q matrix, right? So how, how do you get it? So for, for example, you take any entry. So you take the 2, 2 entry over here, right? So the 2, 2 entry would be obtained by taking the second row of a and taking the second column of b right so you get the you do a dot product between this so you do a21 multiplied by b12 plus a22 multiplied by b22 and so on and you add all of this right and this get gives you c22 well you can do this for anything else right so say i have over here cij right so as the ij row, what i would do is that i would take the i row corresponding to a and i would take the jth column corresponding to right so this is the i row and this is the jth column so i take a dot product between this and basically the dot product between these two sorry would give me this entry right so that's how i would get the i the, the, the cij entry so this is how you can compute the dot product between i mean the the matrix matrix product between two matrices